Hello, BCPS families. We are so excited to share Tiger Math with you today. This week, fourth graders have been determining the main idea and key details of informational text. After you finish listening to the story, we will share some questions for you to think and talk about. Then you will see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text. You can then share your written response with your teacher. Finally, you will see some project ideas for enrichment and ways to have fun interacting with the book. Enjoy! Today we're going to be reading Tiger Math, Learning to Graph from a Baby Tiger by Anne Whitehead Nagda and Cindy Bickle. A special thanks to Scholastic for allowing us to listen to this story together today. Tiger Math is a story all about a tiger named TJ. The story starts with TJ as a young cub and follows him to adulthood. This story is told through both words and graphs. As you listen, I want you to be thinking about how the graphs capture the main ideas of TJ's story. Tigers in the Wild. Picture graphs use pictures to make it easy to compare things. The image above is a picture graph that shows how many tigers are left in the wild. Each tiger drawing stands for 500 tigers. To read this graph, choose a kind of tiger from the names along the bottom. Then count how many tiger drawings are in that tiger's column and multiply that number by 500. This graph makes it easy to see that there are fewer Sumatran and Siberian tigers than there are other kinds of tigers. Hmm, what is this graph all about? Well, the title of a graph is a good place to look. Tigers in the wild. This graph is all about the tigers still living out in the wild. By reading the graph, I can identify some key details about the tigers living in the wild. There's definitely a lot of Bengal tigers, but not so many Sumatran and Siberian tigers, as the text mentioned. Bukra, the Siberian tiger, was going to have a baby. The keepers at the Denver Zoo had already placed a video camera in her den so they could check on the mother tiger without disturbing her. When the cub was born, they watched Bukra and her baby on a TV screen. Bukra was a good mother, licking, nuzzling, and nursing her new baby. The cub, named TJ, weighed only three pounds and looked tiny next to his mother, who weighed 250 pounds. TJ's father, Matthew, was even bigger than Bukra. He weighed 350 pounds. TJ would have to gain a lot of weight to be as big as his father. Tigers in the Wild. Another way to show how many tigers are left in the world is to use a circle graph. A circle graph or pie chart shows what part of a whole something is. The whole circle represents all the tigers left in the world. This graph makes it easy to see that there are a lot of Bengal tigers and very few South China tigers. There are so few South China tigers left, about 40 that they couldn't be shown on the picture graph on page eight. They would have been just a small piece of a tiger picture. When TJ was six weeks old, the zoo veterinarian gave him shots and weighed him. The cub weighed 10 pounds. When TJ's father was six weeks old, he weighed 14 pounds, four pounds more than TJ. Even so, the little tiger was healthy and strong. Sheila, the tiger keeper, had trouble holding him still while the vet examined him. The feisty little cub never stopped wriggling while Sheila brought, until Sheila brought him back to his mother. TJ's weight. A picture graph can be used to show TJ's weight. This is a picture graph like the one on page eight. On this graph, Blocks are used instead of pictures of tigers. Each block is equal to one pound. Each column shows TJ's weight at a particular age. So at birth, 
there are three blocks, so TJ must have weighed three pounds. When TJ was 10 weeks old, there are 13 different blocks, so that means he weighed 13 pounds. Every day when Sheila came to the zoo, the first thing she did was check on the tigers. Bukra, protecting her cub, always snarled, spit, and bared her teeth at Sheila. TJ snarled just like his mother. One morning, Bukra didn't snarl at Sheila. The mother tiger lay on her side, completely still. TJ was mewing and pushing his mother, trying to nurse, but Bukra didn't move. Without any warning, she had died. The zoo veterinarian examined Bukra and discovered she died from cancer. No one now who would raise this special baby. Most of the time, mother tigers take care of their cubs alone. Matthew couldn't take care of his son. He didn't know how. Hmm. After reading this page, let's talk for a second about the story so far and what we've learned. TJ is a baby cub whose mother has just died from cancer. He wasn't gaining too much weight because his mom was probably too sick to feed him. Who's going to take care of TJ? Let's keep reading. TJ's weight. Another way to graph TJ's weight is with a bar graph. This bar graph of TJ's weight looks a lot like the picture graph. Each colored square equals one pound, just like the blocks in the picture graph. To read the bar graph, choose an age from the numbers along the bottom. Then follow the colored bar up until it stops at a line. Follow that line to the left to find out how much TJ weighed at the age you have chosen. So if we look at 10 weeks old, we can follow the red bar all the way up until it stops. And then we're gonna slide over to the left and we can see that at 10 weeks old, TJ weighed 13 pounds. Sheila took TJ to be raised by the staff at the animal hospital. The vet was worried when he examined the cub. TJ was not as big as he should have been. The cub was 10 weeks old and he weighed only 13 pounds. Because Bukra had been sick, she hadn't been able to feed her cub enough. Cindy, a veterinary assistant at the hospital, put TJ in a cage and gave him a bowl of ground meat mixed with milk. Ignoring the food, TJ walked to a corner of the cage, curled into a ball, and didn't move for hours. The next day, he was still curled up in that very same spot. He hadn't touched his food. The hospital staff was worried. The 10-week-old cub hadn't gained much weight since his six-week checkup. If he didn't start eating soon, he would lose weight, which would be bad for his health. Comparing Matthew and TJ The vet checked to see how much TJ's father had weighed as a cub. He compared TJ's weight with Matthew's weight at the same ages. At six weeks, Matthew weighed four pounds more than TJ. At 10 weeks, Matthew weighed six more pounds than TJ. Cindy made a bar graph like this one to compare the tiger's weights. The red bars show TJ's weights. The black bars show Matthew's weight. This graph makes it easy to see that although Matthew and TJ weighed the same amount at birth, Matthew gained more weight than his son did in a 10-week period. This is making me wonder, why? Why were their weights so different? We know about TJ's mom. Was anything else going on? It was TJ's third day at the hospital, and he still hadn't eaten. When Cindy entered his cage, he snarled and showed his teeth, threatening her because he was scared. She put some meat on a wooden stick and placed the meat in his mouth. TJ spat it out. The next day, Cindy tried giving him strained meat from a jar. 
She thought that TJ might like human baby food. He spat that out, too. Cindy and the staff began to fear for TJ's life. Five days had passed, and the tiny cub had not eaten anything. Everyone agreed that they had no choice but to force TJ to eat. Dr. Denny and Dr. Combray, wearing jackets and heavy gloves, held TJ still while Cindy used a stick to place meat at the back of his tongue. It was quite a struggle at first. The small tiger was all teeth and claws. Finally, TJ swallowed seven meatballs coated with dried milk. Cindy hoped that TJ would eat on his own after he got a taste of food. But the cub still refused to touch the meat in his bowl. To help TJ survive, Cindy and the veterinarians continued to force TJ to eat. Cindy used the zoo's computer to make a line graph of TJ's weight like the one below. Line graphs make it easy to see how something changes. This line graph shows how TJ's weight changed as he grew older. Each point on the graph shows how much TJ weighed at a certain age. The line that connects the points makes it easier to see the whole story that the graph tells. TJ's weight. Cindy's graph told a disappointing story. TJ was losing weight. The tiger cub had lost one pound during his first few days at the hospital. Let's look at this graph. What's it all about? The title says TJ's weight. What can we learn about TJ's weight from this graph? It was increasing pretty slowly. We know the vets were having a hard time getting him to eat after his mother died. But then it started to decrease. This will not be good for TJ's health. Let's see what happens next. On the 11th day, TJ ate two meatballs on his own. When Cindy gave the cub a rubber toy, he batted it around. Then she set a meaty bone next to the toy. TJ immediately started chewing on the bone. Everyone started to feel more hopeful. For a few days, TJ seemed to be feeling better. He ate whatever Cindy gave him. Then suddenly he got fussy. When Cindy put a meatball in his mouth, he spat it out. He smashed the rest of the meatballs and buried them in the hay. To keep his weight up, the hospital staff forced the cub to eat again. All the care and hard work paid off. TJ gained weight at last. What's going on in TJ's story now? Well, he's starting to eat. And based on the graph, he's starting to gain weight again. Now, the graph told a more hopeful story. Looking at the line graph, Cindy could see that TJ had gained one pound between 11 and 12 weeks, and three more pounds by 13 weeks. TJ was weighed frequently. By 13 weeks of age, the feisty cub was not cooperative about getting on a scale by himself. Cindy had to hold the tiger and step onto the scale. Together, Cindy and TJ weighed 126 pounds. Cindy put the tiger down and stepped back onto the scale alone. It read 110 pounds. By subtracting her weight from their combined weight, Cindy was able to figure out that the tiger cub now weighed 16 pounds. Cindy was relieved when the tiger cub let her hand feed him on a regular basis. Now he would gain weight more quickly. TJ's favorite food was beef heart rolled in dried milk. By the time he was 14 weeks old, he weighed 19 pounds. The cub was gaining weight at a steady rate and the vet was pleased with his progress. How much TJ ate. This bar graph shows how much meat TJ ate each day during his first weeks at the hospital. 
At 11 weeks, TJ got very upset if he was forced to swallow more than 10 ounces of meat a day. By 13 weeks, the cub was eating a lot more. As his appetite increased, so did his weight. As TJ grew more comfortable with the nursery staff, he became more playful. He played hide-and-seek with Cindy and Denny, another veterinary assistant, on the zoo grounds at night. The tiger cub would hide in the bushes and wait patiently until Denny got close to him. Then he would leap out, grabbing Denny's leg with his paws. Sometimes he would sneak up behind Cindy and pounce on her. Tiger mothers teach their babies how to hunt by playing games like this. The tiger quickly learned to open the nursery room door so he could join his human friends in the kitchen. He also learned to open the refrigerator door by pulling on the towel hanging there. One time, TJ even helped himself to a bag of meat. By the end of TJ's stay at the zoo hospital, he wanted company all the time and cried when he was by himself. Hmm. What if we learned about TJ on the last few pages? Well, he's gaining weight and eating more food. He's becoming more playful. He's opening doors. He's playing hide and seek. He's jumping. He also likes being around his people because he's crying when he's not with them. After learning to live with humans, TJ had a new challenge. He had to leave the hospital, return to the tiger exhibit in the zoo, and live by himself. Cindy visited him often. Sheila, the tiger keeper, hand-fed him so that he would get to know her. TJ played games with Sheila. Sometimes he climbed on a rock and then pounced on her when she entered the exhibit. TJ was afraid to go outside in the tiger yard at first, so Sheila and Cindy went with him. Soon he was having a wonderful time shredding bark from trees and watching birds and zoo visitors. During the next few years, TJ grew a lot. How TJ grew. This is a bar graph of how much weight TJ gained from birth to four years old. TJ may have gained weight very slowly just after his mother died, but by the time he was one year old, he had gained nearly 200 pounds. And by the time he was four, he weighed a healthy 500 pounds, even more than his father did. The graph finally tells a happy story. Hmm, do you notice that space for three years of age? Why do you think the bar is missing there? Do you think TJ suddenly went back to weighing zero pounds? Hmm, I bet they didn't weigh him that year. When TJ was two years old, he was moved to a zoo in Billings, Montana, where they had a brand new tiger exhibit, but no tigers. TJ was just what they needed, a big, sleek, healthy tiger weighing 300 pounds. He continued to thrive in his new home. Several years later, when TJ was four years old, Cindy went to visit him at Zoo Montana. She watched the tiger splash around in his pool. After she called to him, TJ came over to the fence and shuffled, which is a sound that tigers use as a greeting. Normally, tigers shuffle only to each other, but if a tiger in captivity is especially fond of a person, he will shuffle when his favored person approaches. Cindy knew that TJ still remembered her. Cindy was amazed to see how big TJ was. The tiger keeper at Zoo Montana estimated that TJ weighed 500 pounds. TJ had finally grown bigger than his father. What have we learned about TJ's story now? Well, he moved to a Montana zoo. He needed some help from his human friends at first to feel comfortable there. And now he seems to be doing pretty well. He is 500 pounds, even larger than his dad. Here are some pictures of TJ over the years. Let's start on the left. 
There's TJ hiding at the hospital. There's TJ pouncing on Cindy. At the bottom on the left, he's playing hide and seek with Denny. On the right, TJ at Zoo Montana and TJ resting on the rocks. We hope you enjoyed listening to the story. Listen as I read you these questions. Then you will have a few moments to share your answers with someone near you. What is the main idea of the text? What are some key details the author provided that support this main idea? How did the author use graphs in the story to support the main idea? Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and jot down this idea for writing about the story. Why is it important for veterinarians and zoologists to graph data when working with animals? Use examples from the text in your explanation. Here are some more ways you can interact with the story at home. In the story, veterinarians and zoologists use scales to track TJ's weight. See if you can find a scale in your house. Make predictions about the weight of objects and use the scale to determine the actual weight of the objects. Do some graphing. Create a bar graph to show the temperature each day this week. Create a picture graph to show the number of steps it takes you to walk to different places in your neighborhood. Do more research on Siberian tigers. Use the digital content tools on BCPS1 to help you with your research. Zookeepers spend their days caring for and training animals. Practice being a zookeeper by caring for and training any pets in your house. Feed them, take them for walks, or clean their cage or litter box. See if you can train them to do any new behaviors. Thanks for joining us for Tiger Math. We hope to see you again soon.